Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. How are you doing on this gl glorious sunny day? I don't know about you but I'm filming this and it looks like there is a curtain of snow outside but it's just grim, grizzly UK weather. But that's okay because today we've got an episode that's going to take us back to August when it was summer. Heaven be praised, I really really miss the sun. Ugh. But we're going to be talking about another part of fashion in the UK and we're going to be heading back up to Scotland where I had a lovely week away and we're going to be talking about the town of Paisley. Now hopefully it makes sense because I'm doing a bit of subliminal messaging with my Paisley fabric on because we all know this fabric is iconic. You get it in beautiful cashmere scarves, you get it in jewellery and fabulous 1970s styled fashion of course because it was just 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 fabulous there is too much just there and also you might see them like in the lining of a suit jacket because it's just so popular now it's called paisley fabric but really where did it originate from so let's get into that montage of going up into scotland lots of photos and we'll discuss the history of the paisley fabric sitting outside one of the mills that was used to create the paisley fabric, shawls and all that beautiful richness we know from our fantastic shawls today. Voila! And nowadays it's actually some apartments so it's not a bad little spot to have this as your outside view isn't it? Paisley shawl. I'm wearing a paisley black and for the purposes today I made a paisley mask. We went a bit crazy, got paisley fabric and paisley trimming. So it looks fabulous. Oh Scotland. So if I keep looking down to my notes, I apologize. It's been so long since I memorized the script. Don't judge me that it's been months. So I first really learned about the word paisley. Like I'd always known what this was. I seen it like with my mum's cashmere scarves and everything like that. But I really learned what paisley was from an episode of Doctor Who where Bill Patterson's character was a wee paisley boy. And it kind of like opened up this like world of like discovering where this fantastic word came from and what it really meant and I actually have quite a few friends that are from Paisley so it was really interesting to go to Paisley to visit because what's really fascinating about Paisley like there are so many mills around there and they've been converted and I really just want to make a little note to Paisley if you're listening to me Council Paisley you could really, really steer into the skid of Paisley. You could offer Paisley museums, shops dedicated to just selling Paisley fabric. I think it would be a brilliant idea. Can you imagine how many people would go to a Pacific fabric shop for Paisley? I would have. I would have gone nuts because I am the person that likes to be ironic by wearing a fez and fez. Or, you know, Paisley and Paisley, hence why I wore the shirt when we went to Paisley and little things like that. It would be such a great idea. And it's so interesting, the history of Paisley. So let's start with the origins of Paisley. It started in the Industrial Revolution when it began to really pop up. The mills began to weave the cashmere, making those fashion Paisley shawls we've all come to love. Actually, some of the first shawls they made were actually from fleece from the area. So it's really nice they were using that rich product from the area. Now it really, really became popular by Queen Victoria wearing one of these shawls and then it just boomed, which is always the way, which is fantastic, especially when a monarch supports local industry. It really showcases to the public support, follow, like, hashtag. That's a joke, that's a joke. So you know it's Paisley because it's like a teardrop, isn't it? 
when we think of Paisley, we do think of the Victorian fashion period because it was used so much. It was used as men wearing cravats or a waistcoat or a shawl. And it's amazing how much we still use it in period dramas for film and TV. I love it. But I don't know about you, but I always thought that these shawls were actually an Indian product. But the Indians did make Paisley fabric, but they did different things. But the shawls are really a staple of what this town was producing and that's why we have these shawls today. But the design of the Paisley pattern is actually a Persian origin, as well as inspiration from the Mughal Empire. I learned that the Americans named it the Persian Pickle and the Welsh calling it the Welsh Pears. As I said, due to Victoria, it grew into a fast manufacturing rate. But they could really bash out these shawls in this country compared to them being really expensive from India because, you know, we all know because, you know, Rona, that it takes so long for things to be put on a boat and shipped across the world and even longer in the Victorian period. It was really good for this town because it gave a boom and it gave so many people employment and a better state of life. Better state of life. It was the Industrial Revolution. It wasn't great, let's be honest. In the early 1800s, this town really, really boomed from this textile industry. The absolute height of it was in the early 1800s when that's when it really, really, really was popular. The factories used techniques like hand looms and jacquard looms. They were working five colors into these looms, but originally there was only two colors. So it just showed how much they learnt from this boom to create such fantastic fabrics. And then by the 1860s, they were actually able to weave 15 colors. That's just wonderful. And you can see it because the shores have picked up so many beautiful things now. And the town of Paisley continued to be a great place for the textile industry, even up until the 1930s when they were still weaving cotton threads, which is fantastic. Love a good sport. The town went in and out of growth. And sadly, by 1933, there were no longer any textiles being made there, including threads. But where the Paisley originated from was in Kashmir, which is like, Kind of cool. Kashmir, Kashmir. You get it? You get it? Where the name comes from? And they were able to weave the most beautiful colours, it says. And so exotic the colours. So there still was a market for Kashmir Paisley and also Paisley Paisley. But you know what it's like with um, different countries when it comes to textiles? Like the ones that kind of have access to rich dyes from the land and like, you know, modest eyes. They all create beautiful different things and it just shows different variety. And I do love that because it really shows what the land can produce to create fashion. So once it got too expensive to import things from India, that's when they were able to really pick up and pace it because it was cheaper. At one point, it was actually cheaper to stop weaving things. They ended up just printing the paisley, which you can see now in those like fabulous bandanas that we all wore in the early 90s. Oh, loved being a 90s child for a good bandana. Who misses a good bandana? Actually, I think that the young people are wearing them now, but they're not wearing it like we did, like. I think the best way to describe Paisley in any different place where it comes from, India, Scotland, or even Persia, where it you know, came from originally, it's kind of like a sad, Boho brocade. Now I say sad because it looks like a teardrop. And boho because this fabric, when you think of it, you automatically go to the age of love, freedom, being a hippie, a Woodstock. Yes, this is why this shirt is so fabulously and flowing. I love it. But it has such a long, long history. And it's come from so many different places that have taken inspiration from this place and then taken it to this place. And that place has gone to a different place. And everyone has created their own unique way of producing this. Like, it's just wonderful. So it may have come from Persia, but the Indians created something fantastic. Like, you'll see it in the most beautiful, like, cottons with, like, you know, it's almost like chintz to me, the way they've done it. And then, you know, the Victorians doing it in a different way, you know, okay, we love this. We wanna embrace this from the different culture. And how are we gonna make it our own? Okay, so we get cold. So that, you know, 
when you think of Paisley in this country, you think Victorians. And it's just so wonderful that Queen Victoria supported this unique thing that was happening in Scotland and it just became a mass production and the fact that we still use these things today but we don't know where they've come from but they have such a rich history so I'm just going through Wikipedia reading a bit more about it and it says here that the East India Company they brought the paisley over and the patterns but they were not able to actually meet the demand for it so that's what really started the whole way to do it. Oh, what does it say here? It was popular in the Baltic states between 1700s and 1800s that it was a, used as a protective charm to ward away demons. How? I'm just like, that's so interesting. And it, it says here that it even like was brought to Marseille and they started doing textile printing as early as 1640 with it. And then it progressed to printing in the 1670s in England and also in the Netherlands which is very interesting so it just shows this ancient we'll say ancient fabric now has just trickled down to inspire us so so much this cashmere scarves and shawls brought from soldiers that were fighting India you know they inspired this town of Paisley to recreate something and you know, instead of using those silks, they were able to create something else. And I just think it's also really amazing for the Industrial Revolution. They had like pockets all over the place that were producing really unique things and it really made different niches. And it showed that everyone had like a very important part to play in the Industrial Revolution. I think that's something we don't talk about, the importance of the different parts of the Industrial Revolution. Like for example, in my last one of my last videos, we went to the Lake District and because of all the wood and all the lakes and all that sort of jazz, there were lots of textile factories there, but they were like making dyes. Like we stayed in that hotel that made a Pacific blue dye. And then we went to a bobbin mill because of the wood, they were able to just do all that sort of jazz. And then when you look at New Lanark Mill, that was really important as a mill because it developed a work schedule for people and working hours and rights. And then when you go down to certain other parts around the country, everything's so important to create what we know now know of these iconic fashion moments in history. Oh, also, not to boast, um, apparently some paisley was printed in Alsace. I will be definitely researching in that because that is just so important because I am not at all prejudiced at all from where I'm from, at all. Oh. This from. I feel like if they're making anything in Alsace, there's a really amazing textile mill south near Colmar. That's more Malouz, it's in the mountains. And I went there a couple of years ago and they were making the most beautiful jacquard fabrics and brocade. Oh, it was so delicious. So obviously they were making, again, that silk for cravats and lining and I think it's just wonderful now that you still have that in a suit like no one really like looks at it and go oh okay that's just that no it's so important this paisley design has now been put into suits to continue that long long history like my friend who's getting married in Scotland her partner got a suit made in paisley and they put paisley silk into the lining isn't that just a wonderful like full circle of life I think that's wonderful but anyhow I really really hope that has given you some history to the whole shebang of what Paisley is the long long history like can we just note that it started in Persia and now we're still wearing it today and we still love it if you own a cashmere Paisley scarf you feel elegant if you wear a shirt like this covered in paisley you feel free and just fantastic if you're wearing a paisley scarf with a suit you feel exquisite and if you're wearing a paisley bandana you feel freaking cool because i literally miss that fashion moment but anyway i hope this has inspired you to maybe pick up a bit of paisley fabric I made a mask of Paisley fabric with some of the fabric I bought in Glasgow. It's one of my favorite masks. It's just fantastic. On that note, make sure you like this video because it really supports my channel. I really, really love 
delving into history because you find those little moments and you research and you go, wow, there is so much I don't know and so much I have yet to learn. It's very exciting. And also subscribe because I'm always wanting to create new and wonderful content. So do comment below because I'd love to see what you would like next. But until next time, you have the most wonderful um, warm day if you're one of my viewers in Australia where it's about 40 degrees or if you're one of my UK viewers that it's zero degrees. Stay warm, stay safe and I will see you next time.